Friday night, June 19th, IWE returns to Houghton Lake with live pro wrestling. You'll get to see all of your favorite IWE gladiators, as well as your most hated villains. It happens at the Artesia Youth Park, 1800 South Loxley Road in Houghton Lake, Michigan. Tickets are only $5 with kids under 10 absolutely free. Proceeds go to the youth park, and we will have mobile COVID testing on site that's absolutely free for the community. Don't miss it when Imperial Wrestling Entertainment defies the laws of tradition. Take that belt from around your shoulder. <laughs> no. You're not gonna make it to the next match. I have a plan. No. And you're just it's all you're like a piece of gum stuck to the bottom of my shoe. And I need to get rid of it. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome back to IWE's presentation of Battle Zone Quarantine. I am Axel Gear, joined alongside my Scrappy. Once again, welcome to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, love being back here, and this is going to be off the chains because uh, the speed and the action from this match, I think, is going to be off the hook. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. I'm ready to go. Absolutely. Trevor Strahd now making his way to the ring. A reset hire by the Goodman Detective Agency. They'll start on ringside with him. He calls himself the natural born killer and something of a bounty hunter within IWE. He set his sights on Jan Campbell most recently. Trevor Strahd looking to go to war here. But don't underestimate the size of the fight and the little man that he's going to be fighting next. There he is, Tyler Dean. The biggest little man in IWE. Uh, I love me some Tyler Dean. I love the high-flying action. And if you guys want to catch all the... 
IWE action. It is all about Power Slam TV and the High Spots Wrestling Network. Scope it out. We want to thank you very much for bringing IWE to all of our fans. As well as our upcoming show. June 19th. June 19th. We will have fans back in attendance for the first time since lockdown began. I honestly cannot wait. Oh, I'm with you. It'll be wonderful having fans in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Detroit, weight 245 pounds, he is the natural born killer, Trevor Squall. And his opponent from Dream Top Top away at 150 pounds. The Raven Report Time B. Cannot contain my excitement. <clears throat> it's cracking my voice even. This matchup underway here. Natural Born Killer versus the Raven Reborn. What Once again, Trevor Strahd. What a way to start out the evening here. Yeah, this is going to be outstanding. Or should I say, once again, Tyler Dean being shown one that he, he just does not have this, the same height. This is a fight that Tyler Dean has used to overcoming time and time again. Trevor Strahd doesn't quite realize that this is something Tyler Dean is very, very used to. And now Tyler Dean maybe trying to get it into the head of Trevor Strahd. Using that speed to, to frustrate him. I love it. I love it. It's working. Treating Trevor Strahd like a, like a bull on the loose. And he's, and he's getting frustrated. It's, it's working. Absolutely. Tyler Dean not even worried about Trevor Strahd catching him in the corner, and maybe this is why. Straight into a hurricane runner from Tyler Dean. Trevor Strahd had nothing to do but to simply go with it and be thrown across the ring by the biggest little man in IWE, Tyler Dean. Now, now with a stiff headlock applied. Repeated arm breakers, and now arm wrench into a hammerlock, Tyler Dean. Trevor, great, great Trevor Strahd trying to break out of that. Great chain wrestling. chain wrestling. He's got the uh, the headlock here. Absolutely. Trevor Stott now looking for a way out of this. Finds the ropes. Whoops, Tyler Dean off. Who catches himself on his on the far side. And here comes Trevor Stott. Tyler Dean low bridges Trevor Stott right on the outside of the ring. Uh, firmly in control. And, and using his speed and... Well, Trevor Strahd. I was, was going to say it is smart, but that wasn't so smart. Tyler Dean tried to go outside the ring. Well, you know, high risk is for is high risk for a reason, That's right? right. High risk does not always pay off. And now Trevor Strahd has the opening that he needs to get back on top of Tyler Dean here. Wow. Impressive power from Trevor Strahd, shoving Tyler Dean's neck into the middle rope. Tyler Dean now, look, now searching for air. Well, those ropes are, it's a misnomer. Those are steel cables. you having those across your throat. It's You're absolutely right about that. Trevor Strahd. Now taking his sweet time with his prey. Now that he's gotten in control, rolls Tyler Dean back into the middle of the ring, goes for the pin cover, lateral press, kicks out at two though, does Tyler Dean. Tyler Dean. Goes right back in another pinfall here. Tyler Dean is such a again scrappy fighter, you're going to take a Trevor lot more Trevor to get him. Pulls Trevor Strong across into a pinfall of his own, one, two, finds a two count, and Trevor Strong kicks back out again. Both opponents go off in opposite corners, but Trevor Strong comes right in, not giving Tyler Dean any time to breathe. Stiff forearm choke into Tyler Dean's neck. 
Referee trying to separate these two out of the corner. And now Trevor Strahd has Tyler Dean by the hair. Whips him off. Goes for a Tyler Dean turns into a sunset flip, but Trevor Strahd is not about to fall victim to that one. Too much power. Too much power. A little bit too much power does Trevor Strahd have. Throws Tyler mm. Dean into the corner. Ragdolled him into the corner. Yeah. Trevor Strahd says he's got his mark. Mm. Big body avalanche into the corner. And Tyler Dean is down center of the ring. Off the ropes goes Trevor Strahd. Big senton drop. Nasty senton. Nasty senton. Into the pin cover. One, two. Tyler Dean finding the air. Finding the air to kick out. Bella Starr does not agree on the outside there. The, the the heart and the the will to fight is uh is not the is not small in Tyler as much as we talk about his stature his heart right. is the biggest thing he's got going for him it's gonna take a lot to get him down that's right it is the exact same power that's that allows the mother of a child who's trapped underneath a car to lift that car off of their child <laughs> that is the same we see the clotheslines that uh, we see the power of Trevor Strahd if we're gonna use on a full display. If you could use a car reference, I would say car wreck right there would describe that particular encounter. Very apropos. But now Tyler Dean looking to fight his way out of the disaster that is Trevor Strahd. Oh, Trevor Strahd caught him. Big spine buster. Into the pinfall cover. One, two. Float over, right. Float over referee Nate there. Finds a two count. And you can see Trevor getting frustrated because no matter what he does, he just cannot keep Tyler Dean down. And in, that's the story of Tyler Dean. This is If he's watched match and done recruiting, he should know that that's this is what's right. going to happen. That's right. Trevor Strahd, relatively new to the IWE, doesn't know this about Tyler Dean, doesn't realize the amount of fight in this little dog. I think until you're in the ring with a guy like that, it's hard to judge. That's part of what works about Tyler Dean. Oh, no! That was an impressive counter. Tyler Dean going for something of a bulldog. He's countered into a face buster, but Tyler Dean kicks out at the two. I can't believe that wasn't a three. And I've seen Tyler kick out of these things over and over again, and I didn't. I thought he it's was It's impressive done. every time, no doubt about it. Absolutely. And now Trevor Stride into a deep, deep choke hold, sleeper hold. Tyler Dean, doesn't matter what size you are, doesn't matter how much fight you have. If you get your blood cut off from your brain, you're going to pass out. If you don't have the air in your body, you're going to pass out. Absolutely. Tyler Dean may not have anywhere to go, but then again, here he's fighting his way back up. Back up to his feet. Elbows to, to the midsection to break free. Trevor Strong not giving him any reprieve. Blasts him right back down. Trevor Strong believes he has Tyler Dean exactly where he wants him. Oh. A handful of hair. A handful of hair, he could take it wherever he wants to. And this is a. Looks like the turnbuckle. Flips across to the other side, up to the top. Oh no! Tyler Dean had gotten up to the top rope. He was going to do something, but Trevor Strahd, quick to, quick to stop it from happening, took Tyler Dean's legs out from underneath him, and now he's stuck in a tree of wool position. Uh, Trevor Strahd incoming. Oh no! He's going for a rough shoulder tackle, and only found the middle rope turnbuckle. A great awareness by uh, Tyler to get out of the way. Tyler now in a seated position up there, back in some relative control of himself, but Trevor Strahd has not given him the full reign of movement. But Tyler Dean keeps fighting him off. Here comes Trevor Strahd again. Uh-oh! Tyler Dean's got him! Big! Chilt the world DDT! Nah. And both men are down. This could be the opening that Tyler needs to get back on track here. Absolutely. Referee now starting a 10 count. These men have to answer that count or risk losing this match by virtue of a technical knockout. Oh, both guys moving. Tyler trying to climb to the corner here. And referee's up to Trying to get himself now. to his feet here. Six. Both men. Tyler Dean checking on his knee. He may have tweaked it on the landing. He's up. There we go. Both, both men up. are now up. Tyler Dean ducks the line. Big floor over close line from Tyler Dean. And a big drop kick. Trevor Strud. No idea where he's at. Here comes Tyler Dean. Four, 
Rick and Ralph throws him into the ropes. Tyler Dean. Here he comes. Big. Six one nine. And Tyler Dean now going up for the, to the very, very top of our near turnbuckle. Trevor Strong dives out of the way. Incoming. Oh no, Trevor Strong caught him. Picks them all up top. Marching around the ring with a big power slam. What? What? What's happening? This is this is John Campbell's music. Trevor Strong has some issues with John Campbell as of late. Considers him something of a chosen target. But meanwhile, Tyler Dean's up top. Trevor Strong doesn't know it. Jay Campbell's not here, but here comes Tyler Dean. Big, big, big flying clothesline. One, two, and three. Tyler Dean gets the win. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your winner, Tyler Dean. Impressive win from the little man. The biggest little man in IWE history proves it again here tonight. With a big impressive win over the natural born killer. Tyler Dean. Bojack, Bojack. Bojack hears you because he's right behind you, Tyler. Bojack has rushed the ring. Oh my goodness! Big, big shoulder tackle! The IWE Gladiator champion Bojack has leveled Tyler Dean. Tyler Dean, number one contender to the IWE uh, Gladiators Championship. And Bojack says he's not done yet. What is what is Bojack doing? He's laid the title down. Oh no. Oh, oh no. no. He's positioned Tyler Dean's head right above the Wonder Hulk DDT onto the title belt. Oh no. And Tyler Dean is not moving. Bojack has left well beyond a statement here tonight. He may no longer have an opponent when it comes time to defend that title. This what, what did we just witness? Is Tyler Dean even going to be able to come back and, and challenge for that championship? Hey, that's, that's an insurance maneuver right there. That's what that was. Goodman Detective Agency definitely looking after their investments yet again. <laughs> oh, I got your head, didn't I, John? Oh, yeah, you want to... Tell me a story, huh? Well, let me let me cut your story off and let me tell you a story. I know you've been here since the beginning. I've watched the tapes, the clips of old big bad creature feature John Campbell. You know, all you are, from what I've seen and experienced, is a one-trick pony, John. Yeah. You just let everything spill outside to the outside of the ring and do your little tricks for the fans. Oh yeah, because they love that, right? Well, let me, let me ask you something, John. Do you think that in front of all of the IWE fans on June 19th at the Artesia Youth Center, you could take me one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the ring, huh? Keep it nice and simple wrestling match so I can prove not only to you, to that locker room, and to all of your fans that I can take down the creature feature. One, two, three. Right in the middle of the ring. <laughs> so I can embarrass you. What do you say, John? Huh? What do you say? Will I see you on June 19th? Huh? <laughs> you'll see. Because when I claim you, you'll see why they call me the natural born. Killer.
Saturday night, June 19th, IWE returns to Houghton Lake with live pro wrestling. You'll get to see all of your favorite IWE gladiators, as well as your most hated villains. It happens at the Artesia Youth Park, 1800 South Loxley Road in Houghton Lake, Michigan. Tickets are only $5, with kids under 10 absolutely free. Proceeds go to the youth park, and we will have mobile COVID testing on site that's absolutely free for the community. Don't miss it when Imperial Wrestling Entertainment defies the laws of tradition. People say I am here to be a subverter. <laughs> I am here to forge an army of awoken soldiers. I am here to bring the chosen gladiators to their destiny and give rise to a new IWE. I am here to be the hidden hand and the all seeing eye, the one who watches from afar yet is always close by. I'm coming for you all. I'm Amicus, and I am always watching. Amicus saw me go some vigilante supper. Some say champions are born, but we believe champions are forged in the fire of competition. Championship for in the ring or out. J Dub Bells makes custom handmade championships for all occasions. Our customer friendly belt levels allow J Dub Bells to provide quality products for any budget. For more information about us, our leather products, or to order your very own custom-made championship belt, log on to www.jdubbelts.com. Stadium is packed, sold out. <laughs> Woo! It's coming your way. This is Craig Stossel, the executive producer of IWE Battlezone Quarantine, and I'm here to execute some authority and show Rick Green that he's not the only one that's got some pull here. So tonight, I'm gonna make a match. And this match is gonna be the ratings booster, Bill Blackwell. And he's gonna take on an opponent of his choice and defend the Imperial Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. So Bill, who's it gonna be? I want Bam. Then it's gonna happen and it's all for the greater good. I hear, I hear, I hear. Finally, tonight, I get my opportunity. I don't care anymore. Mm, Blackwell, Blackwell, 
me and you tonight, man. I hope you ain't ready to wrestle because you coming in the ring with old Backwoods Bam and I'm going to fight you until I beat you. And oh, Wayne, I hope you're ready to get rowdy because I'm going to whoop you like that old egg sucking dog you are and show to you and the rest of the world why you don't go messing with some old crazy hick from the sticks. Oh, Wayne, baby. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to IWE Battlezone TV in quarantine. We have a very interesting main event coming up right now. A championship match that is not including the actual champions, Grabby. That is throwing me off. Big time. Hey, hey, hey. Bam, bam, bam. We're ready to get rowdy. We are ready to get rowdy. You're ready to get rowdy. I'm ready. 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 i am Banning over here on the table next to me. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, he's got me all fired up. I have up. a drink open over here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fired up is an understatement. Absolutely. That puts Bam is on his own level. It takes a moment like this to make you realize who you're going to be up against. Uh, the giant of the IWE. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. And, and Blackwell's carrying all the gold today. Blackwell. Flanked. By the greater good, Dan Tanner, Craig Stossel. They are, the greater good seems to be forcibly ejecting referee Cody from ranks. Ah, we call that strategy. That would be strategy. You may call it strategy, I call it baloney. This should be excellent. The energy of Bam and the size of Blackwell. Ooh, a contrast of styles to say the least. Now, oh, Bam doesn't want to give up that mallet. You can accommodate for many things, and the greater good certainly does that, but I don't think you can accommodate entirely for backwards Bam. Well, you know, the, uh, the unconventional way he goes about things could definitely throw you off. I, I love it. It gets me all, all, all fired up and feeling good in my tum-tum. <laughs> what do we, he doesn't. He's not. He, he doesn't want to. <laughs> yeah, right. He doesn't want to give up the the mallet there. I think. And uh, sure. uh, how, could you hardly blame him? Look at the size of the giant Bill Blackwell. He's just a sure behemoth. Thing. I'm pretty sure he ate as much as uh, Bam weighs today. I mean, this guy's giant. Absolutely, and it's important to note that it's not just Blackwell that Bam would have to go through here. 
we still have the entirety of the greater good, as always. Dan Tanner, referee in the pocket of the greater good. Yeah. Craig Stossel at ringside. The deck is definitely stacked against Bam, that's for sure. And it's important to note here, Blackwell is not the IWE champion. Jeremiah J. Hughes is the IWE champion. As, as another part of the greater good, Craig Stossel, the executive producer for Battlezone TV, has given Jeremiah Hughes the authority to allow Blackwell to defend the championship for him in his absence. So, we couldn't have picked a, a better guy. I mean, I, I mean, look at the size difference between these two. Absolutely. Unbelievable. A win for Blackwell here. A win for Blackwell here does not put the championship around Blackwell's waist. It keeps it around Jeremiah Hughes' waist. And that's very important for everybody to understand. These, this crazy situation here. On the other hand, uh, now my question is: is what is what is Jeremiah J. Hughes going to say if Bam wins this match? That's a very good question. That's an interesting conundrum that we could have potentially here. Yes, Blackwell would absolutely have some questions he'd have to answer. But back was Bam, the hardest head in wrestling, showing that right now, using it as his own weapon. Pounding it into the chest of Blackwell, who is, to his credit, stay, still standing after several headbutts to the chest. Bam off the ropes now. Oh, no. Oh. That was a nasty deep six type slam. And, and Dan Tanner tried to fast count it as quick as he could, but Bam still got his shoulder up before the three. Mm. That is some kind of modified camel clutch. That... That's a, oh, goodness. Uh, working the shoulder and the arm there. That's that's nasty. Bam now trying to find any way out of this here. And is not above biting. I wouldn't be either. Whatever you got to do. I mean, this guy's. No, it's rather appropriate for Bam. All, having all that weight reaped down on your back. Oh, goodness. And there it is again. Mm. Oh, that lower back and that right shoulder from that last, that hole there. The size difference is so very noticeable, especially when all of that weight is being shoved into the small of your back. Well, I'm going to tell you, when you when the small of your back is sore and hurt like that, it affects everything. Your speed, your mobility, your, your ability, ability to, to breathe. To, exactly, exactly. Bam! Open hand slaps to the gut of Blackwell, trying to create any amount of separation he can. Those palm strikes are no joke, though, I'll tell you what. Sometimes a palm strike can be as dangerous or more so than a closed fist. And effective they were. Blackwell's now off back into the corner here. And Bam had to back off before that count of five. Oh, goodness! Blackwell just planted backwards Bam halfway through the planet. I mean, he knocked the frills off his pants. He drilled him so hard with that kick. Oh! And Blackwell turning him right over upside down into a Texas cloverleaf. Working that lower back again. You can see the strategy here with uh, Blackwell, what he's trying to do. He's, he's going to slow Bam's mobility by working that lower back. Absolutely right. And now Bam is looking for any way he can find a way back into this. He's putting himself think... into the corner to try to get Blackwell, to try to keep Blackwell away. But Dan Tanner has no interest in separating Blackwell from Bam while he's in control. Shoots Bam off the ropes. Comes back in. Big shoulder tackle. Bam uh -oh. is not about to give up yet. No, no quitting, Bam. He's trying to psych himself back up again. Some well, punches at the gut of the big man. And up into the chest. Blackwell finally caught one. And threw Bam into the corner. All the way across the opposite corner. In comes Blackwell, who misses wildly. Eats nothing but the metal of the turnbuckle. Ooh, this might be the opening Bam's looking for. That was a nasty discus right. Absolutely. Uh-oh. In come again. Ooh. Big headbutt to the chest. With the, the hardest head in wrestling. Looking to demonstrate it now. And again, a second headbutt to the chest. Picks Blackwell back up. Looking for another one. Ushers Dan Tanner out of the way for a third headbutt to the chest. Ooh, nasty chops. 
hard chop, elbow strike, chop, elbow strike. Bam has his way with Blackwell right now, and Dan Tanner's looking to try to create some separation now. Now, of course, that it's his man in the corner. Bam's got a uh, got Blackwell reeling. He needs to capitalize here. That's absolutely right. Mm. There's a nice hip attack in the corner there. Blackwell is down on his is down on the mat. And now Black, hey. Bam is just looking for any way to pull him out of the turnbuckle, but he's just too big. He just that, that, that's that size, man. You can't teach size. I mean, that, there's just not you can't teach size. So. Bam saying he's gonna fly. Uh oh, the little free bird similar. Is he? Is what he doing there? What we got? Going up to the top rope. Oh no. Blackwell back up to his feet. Dan, Tanner trying to turn. Oh no. For a double axe handle, Jeffrey Dan Tanner's down. We have another referee to replace. Him. Oh. Big spin out slam. Referee Cody counts to two. Ooh, bam, bam just kicked out. out of there. Blackwell did not like that. This is Blackwell think this is the wrong referee. Big right hand in Cody. The referee is down. Oh, what? We got another ref? We're gonna run out of referees here soon. Nate sees referee now Nate in the ring. So we've sees, got, sees the other referee down. We got two refs laid out. N referee Nate's in here. Look at Bam in the corner. Look at Bam in the corner. Look at Bam in the corner. He's loading up. Blackwell Nate, doesn't Nate see it. And Nate, no, no. Nate, Nate was just pulled into the way of Bam's oncoming attack. And Blackwell shoves Bam out of the ring. And now we have Rick Green at ringside here, locking eyes with Craig Stossel. What do we have here? We got some standoff Rick Reed going on here. Finally, getting Craig Stossel face to face. It's potentially a long time coming. We don't have Stossel a ref. Do we have a ref? Bam! Back into the ring. Rick Green, looking to bring Nate back to consciousness here. He's trying to Stossel get Stossel now into the ring. The referee is not yet coherent. What's Stossel's he about use to use belt? the Imperial Cup. No. What? Uh, Rick Green just turned around and used it on Craig Stossel. Just took out Stossel with the championship. And now Blackwell taking it to Rick Green, but Bam's here for the save. Blackwell oh. pulls off the he dead. And uh, yeah, Bam's pulls like a Bam flapjack. Over. Holy cow. Nate goes to make the count. One. Nate has stopped the count. Two. No, he hasn't stopped the count. And a Blackwell is just shoved the referee's head down. What? Uh, Nate, referee Nate just called for the bell, asking for a disqualification. We're getting some clarification from him now. I'm not sure what happened here. It looks like a DQ. Rick Cartier now came to the rescue. Uh-oh, what do we got here? Corey Kerr. Corey Kerr slightly at odds with his former compatriots here of Backwoods Bam and Rick Cartier. There we go. Corey Kerr helping Backwoods Bam up. Oh, my goodness. Corey Kerr. 
I think he just said, had this been my match, I would have won. You're, I wouldn't have lost. And then throwing wow. backwards, bam, back down to the ground. This, this is absolute chaos out here. Bodies everywhere. Bam has no idea what's going on. Rick Cartier has left the building. And now Corey Kerr is gone. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what has happened. But that is our show here. Thank you for tuning in for IWE Battlezone TV in quarantine. We look forward to seeing you next time, next time and on June 19th when we finally have all of you live back in our TJ Youth Park Center. We can't wait to see you then. Thank you. Good night. Saturday night, June 19th, IWE returns to Houghton Lake with live pro wrestling. You'll get to see all of your favorite IWE gladiators as well as your most hated villains. It happens at the Artesia Youth Park, 1800 South Loxley Road in Houghton Lake, Michigan. Tickets are only $5 with kids under 10 absolutely free. Proceeds go to the youth park and we will have mobile COVID testing on site that's absolutely free for the community. Don't miss it when Imperial Wrestling Entertainment defies the laws of tradition.